Mr. John Lithgow. I'm here with John Lithgow, and I'm Logan J. reporting for SoCal. I have a brand new book. See, in a bookstore like this, if you have a brand new book, you come and you read it for people. And that's how you let everybody know it's there. Can you describe in a short summary what the book is about? Mahalia Mouse? Well, in the shortest possible sentence, it's about a mouse who goes to college, just like the title, Mahalia Mouse Goes to College. She lives with her family in the basement of a college dormitory, and it's a rainy, rainy, rainy September. Their basement gets flooded, so she gets sent off to find food for the family, and she ends up in a backpack. It was zipped closed by somebody, and she ends up in a college lecture hall. A mouse! <laughs> An ear-splitting shriek pierced the air and instantly chaos took hold. Where? People screamed. Over there! Over there! Some ran for an exit, some leaped on a chair. Mahalia, trembling with fright and despair, felt the blood in her body run cold. She hears a, a science professor talking and she realizes she's a smart scientist and she ends up going to college and graduating. The professor stepped forward. To calm the class down, he stood at Mahalia's side. He stared at her notes with a studious frown. This mouse is a genius, he cried. What is the message in that book? Well, it's not so much a message as it, it has an intention, and that is to get even little children interested in the idea of how exciting learning can be get them interested in education in general and college in particular. A mouse who set forth on life's puppy trail and succeeded by simply refusing to fail. You'll notice Mahalia is a little girl mouse and she ends up studying science. I also want little girls to think, yeah, I can do that. Mahalia, bachelor of science. <laughs> what do you enjoy more, writing or singing or acting? Well, I'm at heart I'm an actor and uh, but pretty much everything I've done, all the singing and writing and recording, it all comes from acting really. It's all performing as far as I'm concerned. A couple of my books are kind of unusual because you can either read them or you can sing them. What shall I do? Sing it or read it? Read it. All right, I'll sing it. <laughs> Our soup will soon no longer so blue. You're happy with who you are. You'll never stray too far from you. You're rid of that frown, so waltz up and down beneath the marsupial star. You are a kangaroo through and through, so do what kangaroos do. Crum, 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 you are a kangaroo through and through, so do what kangaroos do. Since you were little, have you always wanted to be writing stories and singing and acting? It's very interesting. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an artist. I, I had no intention of being an actor, and I certainly had no intention of being a writer. In fact, I didn't know I would be a writer until about seven or eight years ago when I wrote my first book. In fact, I wrote my first book without even knowing I was writing a book. That book was called The Remarkable Farkle McBride, and I wrote it for something completely different. I wrote it for, like, the narration of an orchestra suite, like Peter and the Wolf. And it was only after I'd written the whole thing that I suddenly realized, my gosh, I've written a, a children's book here. That's how it all started. Mommy and Daddy have read this to you? Good. Well, I've never seen it <laughs> So do you have any kids of your own? I have three kids. They're not kids anymore. They're 23, 25, and 34. But I have a two-year-old granddaughter. And do they help you write any of your books? You know, my daughter was an enormous help with a couple of my books. Uh, in fact, I wrote one book, I'm a Manatee, and she came up with the whole idea of it all being a dream. It begins, from time to time I dream that I'm a Manatee, and that was her idea. I wrote this book 
because I just love manatees. They're the sweetest animals. That's what I love about them. There's another thing I love about manatees. I love the word manatee. So I love the word manatee so much that I made up a song that rhymes the word 15 times. I'm going to just show you the pictures first, and then I'll sing you the song. Look, look at the little boy at the beginning of the book. See, he's going to sleep. And you can tell this is a little boy who loves the ocean. I'm a manatee. I'm a manatee. Outside the fold of boring old humanity. No difference between my face and vanity. I'm a roly-poly, jelly roly, sugar bowly, horse and solely manatee. That's me. Rum, rum. What would you say is your favorite book? Well, I, I somehow, whenever I'm asked that question, it's always the book that I've just written. Uh, and that's Mahalia Mouse. My next book, I have a book coming out next year called I Got Two Dogs. And the words of those books are the lyrics of a song I made up, which I sing in concert. And of all the songs I sing for kids, that's their favorite song. I'm going to read you this book. You know why this book is invisible? Because it doesn't come out for another year. This is my next book. And it's another book that I can sing. So I'll sing it for you, okay? And you can help me sing it. Listen to the song and it'll teach you how to help me sing it, okay? Anybody have a dog? Yes, yes. Good. You have three dogs? Oh, really? I have two dogs. The grown-ups, you're going to help me sing it. Uh, so listen carefully. I got two dogs, Fanny and Blue. Bet you kind of wish you had two dogs, too. Fanny's all white. Blue's kind of gray. They never, ever fight, and they never run away. They're not too smart, but they're loyal and true. <laughs> Stop, and I trade for Fanny and Blue. <laughs> what was that? That's your part. I sing, the stars and I trade for my fanny and blue, and then you repeat. The stars and I trade for my fanny and blue. You have to hold it real long, okay? Let's practice it once, shall we? Maybe twice. <laughs> the stars and I trade for my fanny and blue. There's nothing I trade for my Fanny and Blue. That's pretty good. <laughs> I got two dogs, Fanny and Blue. Don't know what I'd ever do without those two. Fanny goes, whoop, Blue goes, whoop. Together they go, whoop, 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 whoop. Best darn dogs that I ever, ever knew. There's nothing I trade. There's nothing I trade. No, there's nothing I trade for my Fanny and Blue. There's nothing I trade, there's nothing I trade, no, there's nothing I trade for my fanny and blue. Whoa, whoa, thank you so much. I could keep telling you stories and singing your songs for another two hours, but I have a lot of book signing to do. So thank you for listening to my songs. You were a very, very good audience. Very grown-up kids. Very childish grown-ups. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me interview you today, John Lithgow, and I hope all the rest of your books go really successfully. Thank you so much, Logan. I hope we get to do this again. Me too. I'm Logan Jay reporting for SoCal.com saying peace out. You are a kangaroo through and through, so do what kangaroos do. Rum, 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 you are a kangaroo through and through, so do what kangaroos do. Bum, bum, 